Um, so I don't think anybody else has started this out this way, but I'm going to start out. Would you say and spell your name for us? Say and spell my name. That's uh -huh. funny. Say and spell my name. Um, Danielle Moreau, mm -hmm. spelled D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, but it's pronounced Danielle. Okay. Last name Moreau, mm -hmm. M-O-R-O-U-X. Cool. Nice. Now, there's a different spelling, I mean, different pronunciation of my last name. Uh, in Louisiana, they say Morrow, but okay. where I come, where, where I'm accustomed to, I say Moreau. So. Moreau. Oh, Moreau. And, and where, <laughs> where do you come from that you're accustomed to the different names saying? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I kind of, I made it, I didn't make it up. But I decided it rhymes so much better, Danielle Marie Moreau. Huh. So I didn't want it to, like, it flowed much better. And, and I never heard Morrow until right. I saw it phonetically spelled. And then okay. I went, wait a minute, I've been mispronouncing my last name all these years. <laughs> and I decided, well, I, I'm correct, so. <laughs> <laughs> However else they pronounce it, that's there. Well, right, it's your name, so Exactly, it's, your it's my name, so it's <laughs> Danielle Marie Moreau. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danielle, uh, if we can go back in time a little bit. Okay. Uh, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up here. In, well, in Lafayette? Let me explain. <laughs> I was born in Arkansas on an, ar on an Army base, Fort Chaffee Army base. My dad was in the Army for like 25 years, retired. But, um, I mean, in, for 25 years. So we all grew up on different Army bases around the country. My little brother was even born in Germany. So, but we grew up basically, we moved back after my dad retired. We were there and they were building the Berlin Wall. And we moved back to Louisiana after that. And we built a house in Dusan, Louisiana. <clears throat> so that's where I grew up, on my grandparents' farm in that area. And I went to school, like, it's so funny, everywhere around here says, where did you go to high school? I hadn't heard that question in like, you know, 50 years. And I'm like, okay, I gotta remember back. But uh, that is funny. But I went to high school in Notre Dame High School in Crowley. Okay. And then went to UL a little bit mm -hmm. in uh, speech pathology. And then moved to University of Tennessee to go to the University of Tennessee, get my master's degree for like eight years. And then moved to Florida and spent the rest of my 32 years in Florida, Orlando, Florida. A long time in Florida. A long time in Florida. Where did, was it the beach? What was it about? It was Florida? definitely the beach. I mean, we're 45 minutes from the most beautiful beach, New Smyrna Beach. I mean, it's gorgeous. So, yeah. So, I just recently moved back here about a year and a half ago. What, was the beach too much or you just wanted no. to go back home? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't want to. Well, I, I'm glad I moved back home uh -huh. a little. A petit peu. But uh, it was to help with my mom. My mom okay. had gotten sick and my yeah. dad had passed away. My mom was in the nursing home. And so it was, it was a combination of things. Yeah. Things weren't going very well in Florida. Mm -hmm. They were canceling classes. I was a professor. They were canceling classes left and right. Uh, the, after the 2008 Florida tank. You couldn't find anything in Florida. So I, I thought, well, maybe it would be good to come home. So I moved home, and, uh, and now I'm here. <laughs> so you're here. So, you so what's, what's your favorite thing about this area, about home? Wow. You know, that's a good question. Because I'm starting to find out that Lafayette got cool. <laughs> it, you know, it was kind of cool when I was here, but it got cool cooler. Like having AOC, my mom is the first one that turned me on to AOC, but having a radio station, like I've always wanted to do this in Florida and all my friends are like, Danielle, you're living the dream that you wanted to live because you got your own radio uh, show. You've got, you know, I'm working with Teresa mm -hmm. and, well, special tea. And, um, What's and that show called? The show, uh, Morning Coffee with, <laughs> uh, with special tea and Danielle Marie. That's the name of the uh, show. And so I'm kind of living a creative dream that I've always wanted to live. And, uh, and it's helping me. I'm writing a book. I started a book in, Louis in Florida. And so I'm, uh, I, it's about Louisiana. So it's kind of nice to come here and remember some of the stories and remember some of the uh, little nuances of the French sayings and, and be able to put them in the book and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I think Lafayette got so creative while I was gone. And it is, I tell my friends, I call my friends in Florida, they're like, it sounds like just a playground for kids. I mean, just there's so much to do here and it's so inexpensive that I was like, wow, I, I guess, you know, it's a good place for me to be right now. So that's why I like it.
uh, what was it you said uh, Dusan was where you like grew well, up? Grew up, yeah. Was it, uh, <clears throat> you had mentioned a farm, did you grew up on the farm? Oh yeah, my, um, my dad was given two and a half acres of land on like this big dairy farm that my grandfather uh, ra raised dairy cows and so we, um, we didn't have to work on the farm but we grew up there and so and that's why that's where from like seven years old to like 18 I lived on the farm. What was that like? What was it? You know I really liked it. I, I liked it. I guess I've played all my life because because uh, it was just another playground for me like I didn't have to work on the farm unfortunately my cousins had to get up at four o'clock in the morning they had to milk the cows twice a day you know I just got to go in and play you know I got to go play in the barn I got to go play with the horses I got to go play with the chickens I mean I helped my grandmother and stuff you know wash the clothes of the old the old washing machines that you had to ring you know with the ringer and stuff but I never you know had that many chores per se. <laughs> Maybe that's why I haven't grown up yet. <laughs> oh well. Um, you'd mentioned that your mom had first turned you on to AOC. Yeah. How did you first was was <clears throat> did you come down that day when your mom told you or how did you first get involved in AOC? Well, my mom I used to come visit and my mom used to always say, Oh, I, I um, read the newspaper in French on the radio or on TV. And I'm like, what, mother? Oh, I, I have to go read the newspaper. And so she would just say this. So I'd come, I'd be back, you know, back and forth. And one day I've turned on the, on the television and I'm listening to her voice because they just showed the, the news, you know. And she's reading the newspaper in French on the radio and television. And it's AOC. And I was like, mom, how did you get involved in that? She goes, oh, they just, I just wanted to do it, and I do it once a week, and I just come here, and I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. And then I used to, I used to come back, and I used to turn on the television, and I used to see these guys, remember these guys on the couch that had the tie-dye t-shirts? They had this show that was just hysterical, and I used to tell my friends, you got to watch this crazy show that's on this television. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it kept saying AOC. And then when I moved back here uh, recently, I met Ter Teresa, specialty, and uh, at a progressive breakfast. And we just, and she was losing a partner in the radio show. And I told her what I do, and she said, "Oh, would you come and partner me with this radio show?" And I said, "Sure." So it's almost been a year now since we've been doing the radio show together, which is kind of cool. There'll be a year maybe in March or April, something like that. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe I've done something for a year. And I've, we've had so much fun with it. I've enjoyed it. I really have. Well, tell us a little bit about the show. Describe it to us. The, um, the show is a combination of music and uh, we're, we're, we bring in some of the arts. We bring in a lot of local music. We try to find, and we try to find music that's very uh, obscure, that people are just getting started. So we make sure that it is... Um, um, copyright it, you know, like we don't, we get their permission to play the music and stuff. Um, and it's people that we just run into, like I've tried to bring in local artists, uh, local Cajun bands, because I'm interested in that. Uh, Special T put, uh, finds people from Korea, people from Texas, she finds them from all over and she brings them in. And then some days we just play like popular music, and those, you know, can't be podcasted, but we, we play some popular music. And then we're starting a new format where we're um, <clears throat> bringing in uh, local artists and writers to, to read their poetry or slam. The, we just did uh, Poetic Soul, did her show with us for her slam poetry, lyrically inclined. And then um, we're gonna, I'm starting to read some of my book in there. So yeah, it's, we're, doing, we're changing it up a little bit this year, the format. And are you still thinking about doing your own show? You, yeah, you yes, I am. I'm, <laughs> yeah, because the the morning coffee is very uh, centered, and it's got a progressive flair, mm -hmm. and progressive meaning some of the issues and political issues, which is really good. We need to bring those out. But um, I'm thinking about maybe starting my own show and maybe doing more just just the arts and just maybe the writing part of the arts because I am getting more involved in, in finishing up my book and finishing up the, the writing and, and learning more about creative writing in this area because I used to teach creative writing in Florida so I'm, uh, I'm trying to combine that into one show.
Uh, would you like to give us any more info on your book, or is it still under no, wraps? Uh, no, I'll give. I'll, I, hey, I like to talk yeah, tell about us what it. Your yeah, book's about. well, the book <laughs> <laughs> it's fiction, but uh, <laughs> not really. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's the name of it's called the Queen of Pabon. She's the Queen of No Good, and uh, she is fighting for two and a half acres of land in a little small town in Louisiana, <laughs> which was she feels like was taken away from her. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes through, uh, I used to live here in the 70s, so a lot of the stuff that I did in the 70s, like go to uh, Jay's Lounge in Kankton, all the little bars that I used to go to, Ferdinand Stutes and everything, I'm bringing all that into the book. So, and all, and it's going to be a lot of music and a lot of the recipes, but all intertwined into this story about this girl. And she, she lives out in Karen Crow off of Gloria Switch Road, where I used to kind of live back in the 70s but uh, yeah and, and she's fighting for that but it, it uh, it's an interesting read it's kind of like uh, the the travels of her going through Louisiana she's a little crazy and and she lives with a, a friend named Laureline. Um we I started this book back in 2006 on my way my friend and I used to ride on our way to the beach it's about 45 minutes from Orlando to New Smyrna Beach and we make up these stories. We just make up these characters and make up this story. And that's where it got started. So, and, and so I just started writing it all down. That is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I've got like 60,000 words now. So Will this be your first, are you you're looking to publish this? I yeah. Say. Will yeah. this be your first published? Uh, yeah, it'll be my first. Well, I've been published before, but mm. only feature stories. Not, uh, not this will be my first novel published. Yes. Yeah. And do you write poetry as well? Or I'm not. not I write poetry, but I'm not that my poetry's not that good. I'm mostly nonfiction and fiction, mostly you fiction. You sound like a lot of poets. Uh, you know Jim Jarmusch, not to get too off the topic. Yeah, I know, he, yeah. He did uh, that movie Patterson recently that's about poetry, and he apparently still has his secret poetry book. He doesn't publish a lot of his poetry, but he secretly writes poetry. Really? That's how he started, uh, or he started, he went to school for poetry and then uh, started doing film at some point. Oh, wow, yeah, I love his movies, man. I don't know, oh, my was, God. I love his movies. I'm excited but about that. that yeah, I can't. I'll have to, I'm glad you told me about that. I'll have to look for it. It's a good, I think, interview on Fresh Air probably with him recently. Oh, good. Where he talks a little bit about because that. Because, I, I mean, I, I, I can rhyme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my poetry. <laughs> I can rhyme like Dr. Zeus, you know. <laughs> but that's it. It's not. Um, we talked a little about when you first first came to AOC, but when you first came back, when you first started working on the show as specialty, what was your first impression when you walked in here? Uh, well, I was very impressed. I really was. I was impressed the fact that it's so inexpensive. And now I've been telling a lot of people about you guys, getting the word out, um, because it's so inexpensive. And I, wor uh, working at the communications department at University of Central Florida, I know a little bit about production, a little bit about what it takes and everything. And I was impressed with the equipment and the, uh, how, how much you have to offer. I mean, and a lot of the classes are free. I mean, most of them are free, and I was like, wow, that is, that's so cool. And it's so inexpensive, it's like, I mean, I'm a senior citizen, believe it or not, but uh, I'm old, <laughs> I know I don't look it. But, uh, and it's only like $25 a year. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, it's amazing. I was like, wow, it's so much to offer, so. I was, I was glad I got involved with it. I really am. It's what it when there are so many low points that's happened to me here. The I get here and I forget about it, and I'm just I get happy. I get happy when I get in the booth. Nice. I do. Uh, what has surprised you most about working with AOC, or would it be that just that? that, that we're well, I'm surprised of, of y'all that y'all the expertise that you have. I mean, it's really, that surprised me that, you know, and, and you're here and you're dedicated and, and, and y'all are so nice. I mean, there are times, you know, Matt, there are times where <laughs> you told us 10 times how to do something and you're just so patient and, and you're going, okay, uh, we'll just do it this way. You know, this is how we're going to do it. Just reboot, you know, and so that's, I've been very surprised, very pleasantly surprised, really. It's been good. I'm blushing a little bit. <laughs> 
Um, you said uh, you'd mentioned um, that you went to Tennessee for your master's mm -hmm. degree. University of Tennessee. And and what was uh, what was that like moving to, to Tennessee and and studying your master's at the same time there? What was that experience like? Uh, it was very good. Um, the university I was in speech pathology and not to put down I had I started at USL USL when it was mm -hmm. and it was great. The school here was really good. I just felt like. Um, I was going, trying to go into audiology at the time, like branch off from speech pathology to audiology, and it was kind of combined here. So I wanted a, a different approach. And <clears throat> the University of Tennessee at the time was the number one top school in speech pathology audiology in the United States. So I was so thankful I got accepted. And when, when I got, and I was accepted to two different schools, and I went and talked to Mrs. Bio, the, uh, she was the director at the time of the speech department here and the speech pathology department. And, uh, and she said, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to the desert or do you want to go to the mountains? And immediately I was like, mountains. You know, nice clean water, the mountains, so different. And so that's why I chose University of Tennessee and I loved it. And I got a totally different experience there. I, uh, grew, I landed with a group of people that were um, plant and soil scientists, wildlife biologists, working with, uh, we, we uh, worked on a co-op. We lived on a co-op. I worked as a speech pathologist in an educational co-op. So it was all a cooperative. Everything I did was co-op. It was amazing. So my whole life up there was very concentrated on that, on just uh, collaborating with other people and, and fighting TVA with the snail dodger. <laughs> <laughs> say that one more time. <laughs> I know. I always throw that in. <laughs> and fighting, we had to fight TVA, you know, Tennessee Valley Authority and the snail darter. It was a big deal. Um, the snail darter is a yeah. little bitty fish that uh, Dr. Etnauer had founded, a new species of fish. And TVA was building this dam on the Little Tennessee River. Beautiful, beautiful river. And we were trying to stop them building the dam. Unfortunately, we didn't stop it, you know. Some of those things, I mean, and we were there to the very. We were there till the water came up to our knees. We camped out the day that they're they're letting the water go and to ruin the you know the little Tennessee River and it's no longer there. It's now nothing, you know. It's just a big lake and you know. But we tried, so you can look it up. The, well, what would you say was the most uh, valuable lesson that you took away from that experience, even though you didn't accomplish? Learning the goal about that you a grassroots effort and trying to get something done, and, and environmentally, because then then I went to it was nice because then I took a lot of that uh, experience and went to um, Florida and uh, worked with the Everglades Foundation and worked very closely with Mary Barley, and we're now restoring the Everglades all the way from Kissimmee, all the way down to the Okeechobee. I mean, we got $8 billion to restore it. So there we did win, which I'm really glad. That was the last bill President Clinton signed in office, was to give $4 billion to Everglades Restoration. So I've been an environmentalist, you know, all my life kind of thing. And uh, so I took a lot of that effort and put it into that, working with her. And, uh, and now coming back here, I'm working with the Sierra Club and, you know, the Y49 connector and all that. So I'm taking all that experience and bringing it back home. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. We're glad you are, too. Oh, um, thanks. <laughs> um, what would, um, just switching gears a little bit, if, if you had to pick a dream project to work on uh, creatively, what would your dream project be if you're not already working on it? Well, the, the book. I really want to finish the book. That's mm -hmm. my dream. It's, it's been in the back of my head for 15 years to do a book, and I just didn't know what to do it on. And I would tell people the story of my dad, and they go, oh, you got to write a book. And I go, well, it's not, it wasn't enough. But then a lot of other things started happening in my life that could enter in the, that part of my dad's life could be part of the book and part of my mom's growing up on being a share, you know, on, on a sharecropper's land, you know. So it's now going to be a culmination of a lot of that. So I really, I really want to finish. That would be my dream is to publish the book. What kind of steps are you taking now to, uh, I get, or what, what's changed about your work process now that makes it different from the previous like 15 years you've been thinking about it? 
Um, now I've actually put pen to paper. Pen to paper. <laughs> yeah, I finally did it. And I finally got, like I said, 60,000 60, words. Uh, you know, I've, I've got the outline already done. I've got the, I've got the beginning and the end, and now I'm just, and some of the middle done, and now I'm just putting the stories and putting the thread together to weave it together. And uh, there's a workshop this weekend um, at the ACA that's going to be Tell Your Story workshop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that workshop. I haven't done as many workshops as I used to in Florida. I used to go to writing groups all the time. And every prompt, I would write about the story. I, I concentrated on it for the last four years in Florida. And I didn't hear, and now I'm getting back into that, to really concentrate on it. And, and my process, I don't have a process. I don't write every day. So I can't say I'm really a writer. You know, I'm not one of those that has, to, I, I'm not going to sit there and force myself to look at a screen and make something happen. It, when it comes to me, I write it down. If it comes to me while I'm driving, I'll, I'll pull off and write it down. If I'm in the shower, I get out, write it down. I'm not going to be one to force it. I'm just not. Because it won't be fun anymore. You just, when the inspiration when comes. When it comes, it comes. You, and you address it at that time. Yep, and I have to. That's, you know, it's like I can't let it. It's like pulling it out of the air. Mm -hmm. Once it goes, you can't get it back. So I got to catch it when it happens. And, and that's what I've been doing. That's, that's, so I've got lots of napkins in my purse. <laughs> lots of bank things, make statements I got writing all over it. <laughs> I should pay the bills. <laughs> Oh, well, you may have answered this with working on your book project, but what are you looking forward to most in 2017? Wow. What am I looking most to in 20? To probably get a little happier and to be more at peace with living in Lafayette. I don't think I ever was much at peace. That's why I moved away for so long. And I think I'm starting to appreciate Lafayette and what it has to offer. Because, I, I, like I said, I, I moved away, and, and I, I kind of ran away, not moved away kind of thing. And so now I've come back, and, and I, I'm starting to just be at peace with it. You know, just make peace and see what, see what it has to offer. That sounds like a plan. I understand that all of those motives. <laughs> 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 and have some fun. Yeah. I love dancing now, you know. When I was in college, we used to dance, but we didn't, like, dance a lot with couples and stuff. There wasn't a lot. I mean, there was guys to dance with, but, I mean, everybody danced with everybody. But here, you know, it's like you have to, you know, you pair off with, you know, a guy. Like, you stand in line, like the old times, and the guy comes up to you and asks you to dance. I mean, that's so different to me. Where, just, where's your favorite place to go dance? Um, Vermilionville's a good place. I like Vermilionville. And um, the Blue Moon's a good place to go dancing. I like that. And uh, there was another place, the, um, a Joie de Vie in uh, Brobridge. Oh. That's a really nice place to go dancing. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done, that's been fun. It has been. That, I've enjoyed that. It's, uh, it's been, that's been another really highlight here. I understand there's some pretty like famous or infamous uh, dancers in the in the dancing circuit. Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, infamous dancer in the circuit? Uh, no. no. <laughs> you don't want to pick I favorites. I did, but no, we don't want to pick favorites. I did, but not anymore. Fair enough. <laughs> we won't mention names. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, well, what would fun. what would be? Uh, <laughs> What artists would be on your uh, your best music playlist? What artists would we find? Wow, local artists. A local artist, national, whoever. What what songs or artists would be on that on your favorite playlist of music? Well, I've been what I've been listening to now in my car. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really. I, I mean, I have a lot of favorites. I'm very eclectic. I've been listening to a lot of uh, actually a bossa nova music lately, mm -hmm. like Brazil music from Brazil, music from Spain. I've been listening to that. I don't. I don't really have an artist there that I can pinpoint. Um, here locally, I really like Fofale. I like them a lot. I like. Um, uh, well, I do. Uh, my nephew Rex Moreau. He's an artist here. He's a musician. I really like his stuff. It's, he's really good. I realized. Yeah, that was Rex your Moreau. Yeah, that's my uh, I nephew. I grew up with Mimi. Oh yeah, that's was, yeah. that's my niece. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's my godchild. <laughs> Mimi's right. my godchild. Well, cool. Now we know. Now, now more, it's all connected. More the connected. Than I know. We more of the dots connecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those morons. <laughs> See, they pronounce it different. <laughs> they uh, slightly. <laughs> we all know what you're, what you're talking about, though. I know it's more related to. <laughs> um, when you were young, did you have a, a favorite book or a favorite movie or movie star or musician? I were used you obsessed to, with anybody? I used to read a lot of Carlos Castaneda's when I was in high school. Uh, I'm not familiar. The, um, he he would do a lot of books on uh, animal spirits and. Uh, shape-shifting and just really interesting spiritual ideals that's what got me started with a lot of that and uh, Tom Robbins Jitterbug Perfume uh, Still Life with Woodpecker oh my god uh, Cowgirl Gets the Blues I mean all of those all of his books from one of my favorites totally one of my favorites He's good. Vonnegut just, was one of my favorites oh he, yeah yeah Vonnegut went right hand in hand with Vonnegut yeah, yeah. And, um, and Kat Kerouac, because I got to go to the Jack Kerouac house. I actually did, uh, I got to go to a workshop at the Jack Kerouac house in College Park, Florida. That's where his house is. And so I got more familiar with his work when I got to uh, do workshops there. What was that experience like? What kind of workshops? It was, um, they have different artists come in. You can, you can be an artist in residence at the Kerouac house. And uh, the artists would come in, and they would have their responsibility. They could they could stay for free for six weeks to work on their works, whatever works they had. And they had to do something in the community. They either they so some of them did writing workshops, some of them did uh, presentations, some of them did um, they would bring in other artists in the community. So I, I got uh, I got to go do some uh, workshops there, which was so cool to be in presence of Jack Kerouac. You know, it's like wow. Because his ghost is really there. Because all his books are there. I mean, you could just feel him there. It was cool. That was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell I miss Florida a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it, and I never even lived there. So. <laughs> well, the beach is so beautiful. Uh, before you went down the speech pathology path, I know that, that was kind of your first professional first, venture, yeah. right? Um, what did you want to be when you grew up before that? What was your first uh, <laughs> aspiration? <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, I used to play teacher a lot when I was little. So I think I, think I always kind of knew I was going to be a teacher. And so with that, and I used to play, um, used to play teacher and priest <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but I used to love to play, you know, priest. Yeah. Uh, not that I knew I was going to be a priest or anything, you know, I knew I couldn't do that, but, uh, and I wasn't going to be a nun, uh, that's out of the question, but, uh, <laughs> but I think teacher, teacher. You know, that, or that, a pirate. That seems fitting, I think but, that's right. Yeah, because right. yeah, I've been a teacher now, I mean, I've been a teacher trainer all my life, pretty much. Have you ever gotten to be a pirate? No, but I, well, <laughs> actually I did. Um, in Florida, we have, uh, you know that Pirates Day, Talk Like a Pirate Day, September 19th, I think it is? Yeah. So I got to be a pirate. And in, um, at a Mardi Gras at Universal Studios, I got in a pirate outfit. So yes, I did get to be a pirate. Very well done. <laughs> I met one, one tree. Who, who, were your, uh, who were your heroes when you were a child? Wow. You know, my heroes... Were my my dad and my brother, my dad being um, my dad is a very authoritative person, but a very kind person, and he taught me that you don't neglect anybody, and you make sure that the underdog is taken care of. And one, just he used to always pick up hitchhikers. We used to always be so afraid, you know, something would get happen to him because he traveled a lot around here, delivering furniture. He used to work at Anderson's Wholesale, and I uh, used to deliver furniture. And he used to pick up hitchhikers all the time, especially if they had children. He was just so, you know, like he felt so sorry for them. But um, but <clears throat> he used to take me out of school sometimes, and uh, and I'd go with him on his little trips. And sometimes we. On the side of the road, we'd pick up a snapping turtle, we'd bring it home and cook it, and he showed me how to cook the whole thing. So my dad 
has been a really big influence and, and a big hero in my life. And my brother, my older brother, who passed away a long time ago, he, he was like that too. He was the, for the underdog. And, and, and just, I remember one time I was nine years old and um, <clears throat> living out on the farm, we lived next to the railroad tracks and the hobos would always come to the house. And I remember one day I happened to open the door and this, he scared me, the hobo scared me. And my brother immediately said, Danielle, what are you doing? Because I slammed the door, and unfortunately, in the guy's face. My brother went and got a sandwich, got milk and some money, and ran to the tracks and gave them. And he taught me, don't ever, you know, not give back. And so, yeah, those, yeah, those two people are big heroes of mine, still. That's some quality heroes. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, and I still, remember a lot of what they taught me and I tried I try to live up to that as best I can <laughs> with a little humor <laughs> oh, good. Uh, it seems like you're honoring their memory very well oh thank you thanks <laughs> Matt <laughs> um, okay here's a fun one uh, if you could have dinner with uh, any number between one and five famous people from history who would they be wow if I could have dinner mm -hmm. wow Five famous people from history, mm -hmm. in, in the, living. Uh, Any one to five, anywhere from one, one to, to five, five people. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you have five in mind, that's fine. If not, well, Tom Robbins would be one. I'd invite him. Um, Jack Kerouac, I'd invite him. Not all his other beatnik friends, but just him, because <laughs> they're a little cuckoo. Can I hear Ginsburg? <laughs> no, no, I'm not big on <laughs> Alan Ginsburg. Not that he's not, you know, he's okay, but uh, just Jack. <laughs> and. Um, I would invite, um, oh, let's see, um, wow, I guess mostly the, uh, oh, um, Einstein, I'd invite Albert Einstein, just to let, keep the conversation lively, because he's very off the wall kind of person, and I think he did add a lot to the conversation. What would your first question to Albert Einstein be? Um, wow, what would be my first question? <laughs> um, my first. Oh. How did you? How did he come up with a theory of relativity? I mean, what made him think like that? Like, where? How do you think like that? Where do you start your thought process to come up with something like that? That's what I'd ask him. That's a good one. That seems like that would take a while too to explain. Yeah, <laughs> and we'd have a nice dinner that, that would, would last, you know, for probably two days. <laughs> That'd be a very nice dinner. Um, what, what is, where does your passion lie? Is uh, may, and maybe it's again writing the book. Maybe that's where that is. But if w what is the thing that most excites you or that you're most passionate about? I I, I um I like I do like teaching. I'm very passionate about teaching, and most of my adult life, I, my careers have been either training or teaching. You know, being a college professor for over 30 years in Florida and teaching, and I teach what I want to learn. So right now I'm doing some training in emotional intelligence because I feel like I need to learn a little bit about it, so I'm teaching it. So that's been my philosophy all my life, teach what I want to learn. And what's the best part to you about teaching, if you had to like narrow it down to a best part? Um, <clears throat> for me, I don't have to be pigeonholed into one subject. I. I make sure I'm not pigeonholed into one subject. When people say, no, 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 you can only teach this, I go, oh no, I don't have to just teach this. I can teach this and this and this and this and I'll prove it to you. And that's what it is. I, I don't like to be, you know, they, they try to pigeonhole me in, in uh, college. Oh no, you have to get a college of education degree. I go, no, 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 I can get a liberal arts degree and still teach in the school system. And I did. So, yeah, if they try to pigeonhole me into something, I'll prove to them I'm, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what excites me. <laughs> um, what was, out of, out of all the classes that you've taught, do you, could you pick a favorite? Is there a favorite class that, or a favorite subject that you've taught? Well, the um, creative writing, mm -hmm. is, it was so much fun. I taught it at Rollins College. It's, it's in Winter Park, Florida. And uh, that was one of the last classes I taught in Florida. That was so much fun. Uh, public speaking was a lot of fun because it wasn't just me. I got to hear so many cool stories. 
other people's stories, experiences. I had people from all over the world, because I taught first at the community college, so I heard so many just absolute different stories. Diff I met people that were, I met the juggling, um, the one, this guy won a juggling contest, in, in the most famous juggler, and like he won many contests in the United States. And I would have never known that if I would have been in just a class where I just lectured, you know. So I do teach a classes that are very creative. And then teaching the web design class, I made sure that they created a website that was for, it had to be for a specific company, or they had to make up a company, or it had to be what they wanted to do with it. I didn't give them the topic. They, so I try to give them as much freedom. So I can't say it's one individual one, one where, they, where the students have a lot of freedom. That's where I, that's where I, I shine, because I'm more of a facilitator. And the class is a collaboration. I don't like it to be just me. I understand that. I think that's also my teaching style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's so much more fun. It is, and you know, it is yeah. more creative. Yeah, yeah. and it, uh, it's empowering. I find to which is the real point of that exercise for me anyway. For that exercise is to to let them know they have the power to do what I'm teaching them to do. Or right. Like, yeah. introduced them, I introduced them to Photoshop. They would have never known Photoshop. You mm -hmm. know, PR advertising majors would have never known these things if they wouldn't have been introduced to it. Right. So, and some of them changed, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for them, they changed careers. You know, they said, I want to be a graphic designer or I want to be this, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool, you know, yeah. to help them do that. that find, cool. find their voice instead of just me. All right, I know you've described yourself in more than this now, but can you describe yourself in three words? <laughs> three words. Oh my God, three words. Funny, creative, and sincere. I think that's right as rain. Um, let's see, we're almost done. I just a few more questions. Sure. Um, this has been fun. This is going to be a good answer for me, I think. What is your spirit animal and why? <laughs> Actually, um, the animals that have been following me around are owls for some mm -hmm. reason. I've been very attracted to owls. And in Florida, I had these two little owls that would come and visit me like every evening. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think owls, to me, represent wisdom. So I'm, you know, maybe I'm trying to get in touch with more wisdom in the world. I mean, uh, in the spirit world, you know, trying to be a little wiser than I want to be a little. I want to be more wiser, and I'd, and less. I'd rather be wiser than smarter. And what is what's that distinction for you? The wiser and smarter. Wiser, you'll make better decisions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my family would say that. But, uh, smarter, you just think you know everything. Wiser, you don't know anything. <laughs> so that's the big distinction that in my book. <laughs> sounds like an apt distinction to me. <laughs> it's been the little, those little, they were so cute. I called them Barney and Alice. They would come visit me every evening. They were just so cute. Little small ones. L little eastern screech owls. Yeah. We Got some giant owls that are in our yard making a big ruckus every morning. Barn yeah. owls? Are they barred? They probably, if I had to guess, it's out in St. Martinville. And I know they're, well, from the sound of them, they're very large. Um, and I haven't been able to spot them while they're hooting, but they're very loud. They're like almost alarmingly loud. Oh. <laughs> like, am I the prey? <laughs> Try to tell you something, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, okay, so. Quick, you have a thousand dollars to spend. What are you doing? I'm going to Florida. I'm going to the beach, man. I got to get to the beach. That would keep you there for a while too, huh? Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, it'll keep me for uh, two weeks. Nice. Yeah, two weeks. Cool. I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let me see okay. if there's one that I'm gonna regret missing if I miss it. Um, these are good questions. I love these. These are good questions. All right, let's just do this one real quick. Um, if you were a season, which one would you be and why? Oh, wow, a season. 
<sighs> Summer's too hot. Winter's too cold. The fall is like mm, spring. I'd be spring. Spring. Because everything starts anew in the spring. Everything's fresh. Yeah. And then flowers start blooming. Spring. Spring. Uh, well, we thank you so much for, for coming down here today. Is there anything else you want to say to us while the camera's rolling? Oh, I just want to thank you. I mean, this has been fun. I just uh, thank you. It's kind of like gotten me back to liking Lafayette again. So thanks. <laughs> I think I needed this shot in the arm. <laughs> and I'm glad you were my interviewer. Always I was really glad am. to be your interviewer. Thanks. Thanks, thank Matt. Thank you very much thank for coming you. down. Thanks. Appreciate it. This is fun. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys.